Hey, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. In this episode, I tried shooting some double exposure portraits on film with my friend Carmen, and we made this uh, pretty cheap do-it-yourself home studio setup in my basement. Uh, it was a ton of fun. I actually developed the film myself, so that was my first time developing film. And then I scanned it right after, so it was a really fun process and I think the results were pretty interesting. As you'll see, we also set up the black background with literally just a black blanket that I had lying around my house. Yeah, we set up this light and then I used my brother's mic stand to hold one of those five-in-one reflector packs and I used the, um, whatever it's called, the see-through white parts, like silk fabric as a diffuser just to soften the light. So this, this light on, on the right side would be kind of the fill light. And then the main light would be from the flash on my Mamiya 645. Got my Mamiya 645 here. And then I used this flash that I picked up for about 60 bucks. So the six speed on this is a 60th of a second. So that's the highest uh, shutter speed that I can use with this flash or any flash with this camera. And um, so yeah, this flash was the main source of light that I was using and I was shooting most of these at f8 or f11 if I wanted to ex underexpose one stop it'd be at f11. So for those who aren't aware a double exposure is basically when you expose two images on the same frame. This can be recreated digitally but it actually originated as a film technique where you would actually expose two shots on like the same gel or the same frame within your your film roll. So if you have a Mamiya 645 Pro TL and you want to shoot double exposures, you can just turn this knob here from the square over to multi and you can just fire away. Um, in between each photo, you will have to wind the knob, but that doesn't wind the film forward. It just, um, I think it just winds the, the mirror back up or something like that. I don't know, uh, but that's how it works. And you can literally just keep going, shoot as many photos as you want. You shoot 500. So the first few photos of Carmen I took, um, you know, just normal portraits. I wanted to see what this light setup looked like for future purposes and also just as a reference for the double exposures you're gonna take. One more thing that I'll note is when you're shooting double exposures, you should underexpose each photo by one stop or else anything that overlaps will be overexposed. So I decided to just expose normally if I was taking two photos, but if I was doing you know triple exposures or anything higher I would expose underexpose by one stop just because I know film is pretty resilient to overexposure especially black and white film so uh, I'd rather over than under and also I was just kind of experimenting and seeing what worked This was the first uh, double exposure we took. I thought it would be kind of moody to have Carmen sad in one and then smiling and close to the camera in the second. Honestly, it looks pretty cheesy, not gonna lie. Um, a lot of these can look cheesy. Um, so going forward, I guess I'll try and keep that in mind. But uh, We then tried doing a double exposure with two people instead of the same person. Looks pretty weird, not gonna lie. So another thing I would note is I wouldn't do anything over three exposures. Um, by the time you get to four, everything just starts to mesh together. It just gets really chaotic and you can't really tell one image from the other. Uh, we came upon this idea where the first image, we would use the flash. So it would be kind of like this sharp, crisp image of her just staring right at the camera. And then the second image, we would use a longer shutter speed. So I, I believe I used a half of a second here with no flash and just having the fill light. And she would kind of move her head from one side to the other. So it would kind of look like she had this crisp portrait and then like a blur going across her face. I think it turned out pretty interesting, but um, if I were to do this again, I would have the fill light kind of straight on rather than just from the side, because since it's only from one side, the blur is only on the left side of her face. And I think it would have been a lot cooler 
if it kind of wiped all the way across. Another thing I tried was grabbing a plant from my mom's bedroom. And the first photo, we just got Carmen to look at the camera. And the second one, we held this flower um, kind of approximately where her face was and took another photo with the flash and double exposed that. And this is what we got. I think it's pretty cool. Um, because the flower was white, it makes it harder to see Carmen's face below, but you can still see her eyes and some of her lips and those details coming through, which is really nice. The reason why I wanted a black background is because whenever you do double exposures, so the second image, any bright part will basically overlap or wipe away the first image. Because the background is black and didn't reflect any light, the background in the second image wouldn't wipe away the portrait from the first picture. I would definitely try this again, um, maybe be a bit more intentional, um, thinking about how the next photo would affect the other a bit more, because I was just being a bit random with it, just seeing what happened. But yeah, I would definitely do this again. And uh, let me know if you've tried this, if you're thinking of trying it, um, what you think works and doesn't work. I'd love to hear that. So just let me know in the comments. And I hope you enjoyed the photos in this video. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.